All right, let's do this thing. It's time for Jesus World. Welcome to Jesus World, where we are learning what life is like in this world with Jesus. In Jesus World, there's freedom. Because the Bible says, in this very world, there's freedom. Jesus said, in the world, you will have trouble. But be of good courage. I have overcome the world. In Jesus' world, I'm never alone. Because he said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Today, we're excited that you're here with us. We're going to have an amazing time. We're going to be going over the four most important things. If you've been watching, then you already should know number one, two, and three. Today, we're going to look at number four. Four. First, we're going to be number one, and number two, and number three. Number one is God loves me. Say that right from your heart. Say it like you mean it. Say it. God loves me. God is one who created you and he loved you so much. Number two is I have sinned. Sin separates us from God and brings forth death, disease, sickness, all the ugly stuff into our lives and into the world. Sin is an ugly thing. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. But God didn't want that for us. So here's what happened in number three. Jesus died for me and he died for you. Number four is, I, I need, need to decide to, to live for God. God. One more time. I, I need, need to decide to live for God. Who, me? Yes, you. 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 You need to. I need to? What about me? What about you? <laughs> what about you? I need to decide to live for God. Come on, say it with us. Number four is, I need, need to, to decide to live for God. Who is I? I is you. You need to decide to live for God. Every single one of us have to make a decision for ourselves to live for God. It's not enough that your mom and your dad did. It's not enough that your pastor did. It's not enough to just call yourself a Christian or go to church. You, who? You need to make a decision to live for God. So let's talk about that because this is a huge decision. It's an important decision. That's why it's called the four most important things in the whole wide world. Let me tell you a story. Hmm. It happened thousands of years ago when Jesus was on the earth. Here it is. It's found in John chapter 3. There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, explained Nicodemus? How can an old man go back into his mother's room and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. You must be born again. You must be born again. Wow, good job, son. Excellent. The important thing. You need to get out of that lesson. John chapter 3, straight from the Bible. In order to live for God, you must be born again. There are a lot of people in the earth who want to do right, do their best to do right, and actually that's good. To actually live for God, you cannot do it in your own strength. You have to have the power of God. God knew this. That's why Jesus died 
for me. He paid the price for our sins. Why? So that God himself could actually come and live on the inside of you. If Christ, if God himself does not live on the inside of you, you actually can't even live for God. That brings us to, the, to today's memory verse. Today's memory verse is found in 1 John 5 verse 12 and it says this he who has the son and who's the son of god jesus has life he who does not have the son of god does not have life wow that's an amazing verse if you have jesus on the inside of you you have the very life of god on the inside of you and you can live for god but without Jesus, you cannot live for God. So I need to decide to live for God. That's excellent. But the first thing you need to know about it is you have to have Jesus in your heart. How do you get Jesus in your heart? You got to believe on him. When you believe that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is the son of God, that Jesus died for your sins on a cross, that he was raised from the dead, that today he's alive, he's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, that he's coming again soon. And with that faith in your heart, you open your mouth and say, Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, be my Lord, be my Savior. Something very special happens. He comes inside of you and you're born again. It's kind of like this. I want you to imagine that this is Leon's heart, okay? This, in my other hand, is what? A seed, an apple seed. This is what the Word of God says. It says that the Word of God is like a seed. And our heart is kind of like ground. When someone shares the Word of God, like we're doing today, we're preaching the Word, we're telling you what the Bible says. It's like the seed is being thrown on the heart. Now, if the heart is open, then the seed will go in. That's believing what God says. Once you put seed into ground, what happens? Do you know what happens? It grows. It grows. If you put an apple seed into the ground and water it, somebody say, and water it. And water it. Then up will come a tree. And then out of the tree will come. Apples. Apples. Same thing with the word of God. When you believe the word of God, it goes into you. And then you water the word. How do you water the word? With more word. The word of God is also called the water of the word. So you keep watering the word that's in your heart already. How? By reading the Bible every day. By going to church and learning more. By practicing what God tells you to do. Learning how to love. Learning how to walk by faith. Learning to forgive by hearing the word of God. When you do that, you're watering the word. Then it's gonna grow inside of you and out of it will come the fruit of God, the fruit of love. Things like love, joy, peace, beautiful things. You will be living for God. Number four is I need to decide to live for God. So there's two main steps to this that we're talking about today. Step one. Believe on Jesus and you will be saved. Believe on Jesus and he'll come into your heart. You'll be born again. Pray this simple prayer with me right now. Say it from your heart. Close your eyes. Lift up your hands to heaven. Say, God in heaven. God in heaven. I believe. I believe that Jesus died for me. That Jesus died for me. That he was raised from the dead. That he was raised from the and dead. And that he's Lord today. That he's Lord today. Jesus. Jesus. Be the Lord of my life. Be the Lord of my life. I open up my heart to you. I open up, uh, open up my heart to you. Come inside. Come inside. Change me, God. Change me. I want to live for you. Live for you. Take, my life. Take my life. Do something with it. Do 
Like say this really from your heart. Say, fill me, fill me. With, your Holy Spirit. with your Holy Spirit. With a hunger for the Word of God. With a hunger for the Word of God. I give everything to you. I give everything to my you. whole life. My whole life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Number two, you're going to be a disciple for Jesus. Number two, make a decision. I'm going to start learning more about him, going to church, start reading the Bible. On Mondays, Abigail and I are re reading through the whole Bible, and we're doing a video on Mondays, and you can come learn more about the Bible every week. And then on Thursdays, today, we do these lessons so you can get, hear the word, hear the word, hear the word, read the Bible. If you're not going to church, ask your parents, say, Mom, Dad, I really want to go to church. I want to live for God. I want to learn more. You are amazing. We love you. We'll see you next time. See you next time.